Oh, I didn't change my name, but that's all right. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are you, my wonderful, confident, successful business owners? It's wonderful to see you on this. Well, for me, it's a nice sunny morning <laughs> here in Adelaide. Um, now, we are coming to interview one of our amazing um, members of the group. I would like to introduce you all to the incredible Michelle Hill. How are you, my darling? I'm excellent. Thank you, Ali. And thank you for asking me to be here today. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. We're going to have a great discussion. We're going to learn all about you and your business. Thank you. Um, so for let's let's start. Let's get straight into it. Tell us what exactly what it is that you do and how you came about to do it. Okay, so I help in the main small business owners take their whole situation from chaos to calm. Now, the way I go about that is looking at because I'm a very structures and systems sort of person, so it is about it is about mindset because like you can you can teach people skills, but if they're not ready to implement them, they don't work. Yeah. But in the main, mind has a, a lot of practical components around how how to plan for your long term goals, how to align your planning. How to, how to get your systems and structures and processes and, you know, all, all, the, all the background stuff that most people don't think about when they first start a business and then suddenly realise that, you know, they're, they're like that swan, you know, gliding across the lake. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we see on the surface. But underneath your feet are going like this and you're thinking, oh, my God, what do I need to do next? So, so that's, that's the basic premise of my business. Um, my background, um, I spent many, many, many years in um, corporate sales and marketing and coaching and mentoring sales teams and things like that. Plus, I was always, you know, you, you know how there's always the friend that you go to to talk to about shit? Oh, yes. <laughs> sorry. I'm not, I'm, I'm, oh, go, go, go for it. We're real here. We're real. <laughs> if you, if you I forgot to, <laughs> I'll try not to yeah. drop any bomb. Um, so so it was it, that that's you know that sort of that corporate background but also being the and being the oldest child and all that sort of stuff in my family you kind of felt like you're always trying to help people and help them figure out their issues and you know at work it was more about you know how do we how do we get this organized so that if you if that person leaves someone else can step in and take over so that's where my brain always came from. Yeah. And about, well, it's about six and a half years ago now, uh, my partner and I decided, let's start an online business. What a great idea. <laughs> let's start an online let's business come. around his passion, um, which is horse racing and tipping. And guess what? It's a lot to learn when you don't know anything about the digital just a little <laughs> bit <laughs> and <Just> a <laughs> um, and uh yeah just going from I think also that corporate mindset of you know there's that manage you can always blame management um, because <laughs> yes, it's management's yes. fault then all of a sudden you are management so the buck stops here so that that started me really on a uh, a real journey of personal development as well. So that has all kind of swirled around and combined to, to bring me to, you know, my, my business name is Health Biz Coach and I'm a, I'm a business coach and mentor, but I'm, I'm looking at the holistic view as well because, you know, if, if you as a business owner are not fit and healthy and, you know, energetic and, you know, ready to go, it's really difficult, particularly at the start, to, to roll with the punches and to, to do the work and, you know, to get think, to get some momentum going. So, so it's kind of, you know, all of that. But my real, my real forte is like, you know, let's get this organised. <laughs> so that's a very long answer of that's what I do. We've got half an hour. You can. Oh, talk. okay. I'll keep well, talking. <laughs> um, no, and well, I love this. And and you, what something you said just then. This is the second 
time I have heard this analogy in two days. So maybe right. you're just trying to tell me something. Um, but you use the duck gliding across the water and like madly paddling underneath. Yeah. That, you know, and sometimes we do, we do feel like that in business. And like you said, particularly when we start, I, I yeah. had the same thing when I started my digital business and you know, I've worked in, I've been an entrepreneur for 20 odd years off mm. and on. But when I started the business, this business in 2018, all of a sudden we had social media, which wasn't around 20 years ago. <laughs> and so, you know, as a 45 year old, like, shit, I've got to learn all this stuff and be organized in it. And I love that. And this is, this is where as business owners, we complement each other. Mm. Uh, which is why again I'm all about collaboration over competition I'm not a naturally organized person <laughs> people come to me for motivation for encouragement for advice yes. because I love that you have said you're yes. working to your strengths absolutely and, I and respect that. can I just say it also Ali too that like meeting lots of other people in business and developing a network of people you know is super important because yeah. I can't be all things to my clients. Mm. You know, like I can help them particularly do deep dives in certain areas, but in some areas, yes, I can help them to a certain extent, but if I can't give them what they actually need, I, I need to have people that I know and trust that I can then refer on to because I know they'll be in safe hands. Yeah. And I totally agree with you about, you know, let's support each other because you know, there's like just in Australia, how many million people are there and how many clients do we all actually want? Yeah. And who do, you know, how many people can you realistically work with? So like, yeah, let's just all work together. That's, you know, the way I look at it as well, because at the end of the day, it is about seeing our clients achieve their results. Yeah. And if that's me for part of the way or me for all of the way or three different people who come together, it, it's the outcome that's important. It's not it's not who and how sort of thing. Yeah. I, I totally agree. And isn't it interesting when, um, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> excuse me, like you said, um, some people, you know, will, will resonate with you as a yeah. coach. Um, some people will re resonate with me, even though like we do very similar things. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I love and I respect that. And this is where I think people often think we, we, I've seen a lot of people, and tell me if you've seen this, they go into business and they go, I've got to do something totally, completely different to everybody else so that I can stand out. Mm. Here's my point of view, and I'll be interested to hear yours. As long as you're being yourself, you're going to stand out to the right people. Absolutely. And it's interesting because I was listening to something last night and it was, work with what you're aligned with yeah. and what you're in and if you're putting out that energy people people will come into your energy and if they're attracted to what you do and your energy and they feel comfortable with you they'll come and work with you but if not then they keep going till they find somebody that they're attracted to and I know that it sounds a little bit woohoo um because for like I have a, a science background, so I'm a very black and white person. So uh -huh. when we start talking, like I've done a lot of work in energy and the spirituality in the last few years because I kind of, I got to this point where I thought I feel like I'm not balancing myself. And right. when I started to, to learn more about energy and vibrations and all you know how how it's all vibrating and this that and the other I'm like that sounds suspiciously like what I was taught <laughs> I was <laughs> learning chemistry and physics oh, there you go. <laughs> so it for me it started you know it started to meld together and make be, and make sense in terms of like for me if I can understand it and make sense of it then that's that's great. Other times I just have to trust that, yeah, that's how it works. But yeah, if you'd spoken to me 10 years ago and said, oh, like, it's just, you know, you put out the energy and people will be oh, attracted yeah. to you, I would have gone, yeah, sure, right. Mm. 
move on. <laughs> I'm hearing everything your face, sister. I feel like we are the same person. <laughs> oh my goodness. So how how come how can we have not spoken before then? <laughs> I know, I don't know. <laughs> Um, now, I'm really curious because um, you said and you were saying about you've got a very holistic method, which I love. Now, I know that, you know, your your focus is on, you said, organisation um, and, you know, planning and time management and things like that. So can you just go a little bit deeper into exactly how you help people in those areas? Oops. Okay. Well, really... The, the starting point is where, where do we want to go? You know, like what is their goal? What is like what's their five-year goal or their 10-year goal? What's their three-month goal? What do they need to fix right now? Um, and I, I actually was talking about this yesterday that there's a quote from Alice in Wonderland where she comes to a crossroads and she, she says to the Cheshire cat, which path should I choose? And the cat says, well, where are you going? And she says, I don't know. And he says, well, then it doesn't matter what path you choose because any path will take you there. So it is about understanding where you want to go. And sometimes it is about pulling back, like let's, let's, let's analyse where you are now. What, what does... Where does your time go? How are you spending your time? Like, what do you do when you get up in the morning? What is distracting you? Do you do you have some boundaries in place so that when you sit down to work, people know not to interrupt you? Um, and can I tell you? We were just talking about that. Yeah. We? <laughs> and can I I'll tell you a story? I mentioned my partner Tim. He's a horse race tipster. And when he first started doing the business, like he sits in front of six screens and sometimes he just looks like he's just sitting there doing nothing, but he's looking at stats and he's looking at race replays and things like that. But we would come up and interrupt him and say, oh, you know, and he'd say, stop, like I'm working. And I'm like, how can I tell? You don't look like you're working. <laughs> um, and so it was like, how can we how can we have some sort of signal so that I, you know I know not to interrupt you? Um, so he's got this like you know little hat fedora thing. So what we decided was that if he had the hat on, then we weren't supposed to walk up and interrupt him. So that worked really well. I like it. And, but then, <laughs> then um, about six months later, in a moment of truth, he said, "Oh." I have to I have to tell you something. Sometimes when I hear you or the boys walking up the hallway, I just put the hat on anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it's like, but but they're the sort of things, it's it's sort of like um, you know, if we want to go here, we need to understand like where are we? Like, you know, those maps with the red arrow that say you are here. Yeah. So like this is where we're starting from. And like, what is your biggest obstacle, roadblock, problem? What is it that's making you feel like you're overwhelmed or you're not getting stuff done or, you know, you're, you're running in that hamster wheel all day and then at the end of the day you've still got your to-do list yet you've been busy for 12 hours. So it is kind of breaking it down to where are we starting from, what technique is going to work for you because not all techniques work for everyone yeah. and then if you're not implementing things why not is that when we have to start going up here to look at what are the stories I'm telling myself what are the beliefs I have what are the things that are making me procrastinate mm. am I telling myself mm, I'm not good enough to do this <laughs> yeah. you know and I I hear that and and it seems like you know I don't know about you but but me as a business coach I feel like I'm asking constantly asking people those questions but and and uh, <laughs> some people just go oh my god she's asking again but they but there's a reason powerful, why you have to keep asking <laughs> powerfully simple questions to ask and they yes. really get people thinking don't yeah. they 
And I mean, one of um, one of the things, and I got pulled up for it in a meeting the other day where I'm very conscious of the language that people use about themselves as well. And um, this person kept saying, I'm going to try and do this. I'm going to try and do that. And I said, can I just change that word, please? Yes, yeah, <laughs> I, I hear you. <laughs> can, can we change it to I am going to? And can we have a time frame, please? Yeah. And it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but, but again, it's, it's, it's just a simple word that you change, but it changes the whole perspective and dimensions oh. of what you're doing. So, and I think I mentioned it before, like you can learn all the skills in the world like you know I, I, you know this is this is how you time block this is how you do your morning routine this is when you meditate this is but if you're not implementing it it's a waste of time so so that's when the for me I feel the real the real skill of the of coaching and working with the client comes in is helping to not only identify that there's a block but then work to figure out what it is and then how we are going to get that person to unblock themselves. And I love yeah. that you said that. So where you're working together with someone yeah. to help them unblock themselves. Yes. I it's love not- the way you say that because you can, <laughs> we can't do it for them. No, it's not my job. My, my job is to, help. you know, ask you all the questions you don't want to hear and make you do all the shit you don't want to do. <laughs> exactly. And you know what I love? And I just want to point this out. Something I was, I was reading through your bio, um, yeah. we've got in the description here, and something that you said is you're a no-nonsense coach. And I love that. <laughs> well, you know, as you said, there's, there's a range of different people out there um, yes. and... Everybody, everybody fits, you know, as I said, like, um, and I think I've explained this to my sales team many, many times over the years when I was working with team, just because a person is breathing and they have a pulse doesn't mean to say they're a potential customer. Yes. <laughs> you know, and sometimes I think there's this like, you know, I, I have to appeal to everyone and I have to be the right person for everyone, but you have to be the right person for that person. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Powerful stuff, Michelle. Powerful stuff. I feel like I'm on my soapbox. I'll stop preaching now. <laughs> no, 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 don't. No, that's okay. Fine. All so right. Get back on it. Go on. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Um, so I believe that you've got, speaking of, you know, the, the planning and all that sort of stuff, I believe you've got something coming up that um, you might want to tell our audience, our, our members about. I have. Um, in next week and um, early in November, I'm doing a workshop called Double Your Productivity in 2023. Now, the idea is this. This is a two-hour um one is online for all of my non-brisbane friends and i am actually um after doing so many online things um i've actually booked a room and we're going to do a live version as well Ooh, and yes. so that'll be when wednesday night next week is the online and then friday morning is the live and then uh, I'm looking at the calendar as we speak, uh, the 8th and the 10th of November, I'm repeating that as well. So the idea behind that is to come along and, yeah, learn, learn some of the, the planning steps, some of the, some of the ideas behind how and why habits stick mm. and how you can not so much change your thinking, but like make it easier for you to start doing a habit by looking at the environment you're in. You know, for argument's sake, if you if you decide that oh, I'm going to go to the gym every day, but then you have to drive for 30 minutes to get to the gym, that's not going to happen. But if the gym is like maybe on your way to work or it's around the corner, it's you know way more like so it's just thinking in terms of that 
And then, as I said, with time, there's lots of different time management techniques and ideas. And, you know, I've got information about those, but also ways to, again, make it stick. Like how, how do you, if you've set up, uh, if you've time blocked your day, how do you make sure and, like, Nobody ever does it 100% perfect. Don't don't ever don't don't ever think yeah don't ever think that just because you time block your day that it always works out exactly. But um, if if you stick with it, you can get a big chunk of it done regularly. Um, but if you don't stick with it, like why not? Like you you're taking the time and effort to plan and mm. think about what you're going to do, but then you're not doing it. Is it distractions? Is it because you're, you've chosen tasks that you don't know how to do, so you're procrastinating? Or is it making cold calls that you don't want to do? You know, it's, why are you not doing that? So those are the sort of things that we'll talk about. And, and I'm, I'm going to, <laughs> and I, do I want to admit this right now? You know what? I'm just, going to, be, I'm just going to be real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love to time block. I, I, as I said, I'm not naturally an organised person, but having run my own business, yeah, I've had to learn to be. Yeah. But I've got these, I've got these things that I have <laughs> had on my list for dead set three weeks, <laughs> and I keep blocking out the time to do them. And this afternoon, I have blocked out time to do them. And we're having this conversation, and right. weeks, I'm going. Okay, I'm so, gonna have to do it so today. We'll stop procrastinating because I don't. Why? Like them. Why are you not doing them, Ellie? Because I don't why? like it because it's right. Fun. It's not fun. <laughs> okay, so so here's my next thing. If if you're if you're continually coming up against things that you don't like to do, um, how can you delete them from your time blocking or delegate to somebody else? Or that's automate. The that's the other thing. <laughs> that's the question I'd be asking myself because because yeah. that's that's the thing when I when I talk about um, how how to set up your org structure and then you know when you start to grow, who, who are the sort of people that you need first? Mm. The people that you need first in your business are the people that are going to do the stuff either that you don't know how to do yeah. or you hate to do. That's right. That's yeah, right. They're, that's the they're the they're the first things that you should be looking to replace, and that's going to be different for everyone because everyone, you know, has different preferences, hates. Like some people actually like to do book work. I don't know that there's very many of them, but I'm sure there's one out there. <laughs> my, my VA is probably sitting there now. She's watching and she's going, "Oh, holy crap! What's she going to give me to do now?" <laughs> But she knows what she knows, and she also knows what I've been avoiding doing. So. Yeah, yeah. But but I mean, there's and you know, I commend you for for being open and honest about it because, as I said, sometimes, and I find this too. You listen, you listen to interviews with people, or you listen to a podcast, or you go to a workshop, and it all seems like easy and they're doing everything perfectly and, mm. you know, boom, boom, boom. It's just going to happen without any effort. But, you know, when you get real about it, like, you know, some stuff is hard to implement and yeah. some stuff is easy. But if you don't know the right ways and what to do, it, you know, it gets even harder. But um, I'd, I, I would hate to think that, you know, there's people sitting out there going, oh, my God, I, I don't do that. Therefore, you know, I, I should be doing, I should, I should, because everyone's race and path is different. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I love that you've said that because it is, because you said before, you know, we all think differently. We all learn differently. Yeah. Um, you know, and we've already said this morning that, you know, we've both of us, we do similar things, but we've got different strengths. Mm. Um, so it is just, and I think as a business owner too, it's just a matter of making the decision that you are going to do whatever it takes. Yeah. To, to, yeah. You know, and, and if you, you know, like for me, like I said, organization, you know, it's not my strength, but it's something that I've had to well, step up. The and, other, the other way you can look at it is if you have to do something that you don't like to do, you need to look at it from a different perspective and try and find 
the joy in it. Oh, For yeah. example, if you have something in your business that you don't like to do, but once it's done, like what is it going to bring for you or what is it going to bring for the business or you know if it's going to increase your revenue what can you do with that increased revenue so it is about reframing sometimes because Definitely. you know we're not always in a position you know as a grand we said let's just delegate well <laughs> I'd love to have a staff you know 15 staff oh. behind me and I'll just chuck things over my shoulder and say here organize this for me um, that'll happen one day for us all oh next next week preferably um <laughs> <laughs> I love your vision <laughs> um, but yeah it is about it is about reframing what you're telling yourself not oh, I, ha I have to do this and I hate doing this. It's like, okay, if I do this for two hours, then this. Yeah. And sometimes it's sometimes you can bribe yourself as well. Like if I do this for two hours, then I can and you do something for you. Yes, you I've know? done that. <laughs> I love it. This has been absolutely, uh, we're out of time already. Oh, I, I love this. I could go on forever. Um, but I would love, so you've mentioned that you've got your workshops coming up. Yep. I know that my VA has put the links in. Um, so just remind us of the dates and the times that they are and where the live ones are as well. Okay. So the online ones are Wednesday the 26th at 6 p.m. Brisbane time. And, and I'll just make sure I get the right date. Tuesday the 8th of November at 6 p.m. So they're the two online. The Brisbane ones are at Monty's Place in Wynnum, um, which is a suburb of Brisbane, and 28th of October at 10 a.m. and then the 10th of November at 10 a.m. So, um, yeah, I can put, like, you know, put all that together in a comment. But, that um, yeah, yeah oh, that my, my that, video looks like she's already done it. Look, she's on it. Oh, okay, because I can't see the comments for the live. So you're awesome. I love you. You can come and work for me. <laughs> oh, sorry, no, I wasn't trying to poach. Wasn't trying to poach. So it's not ever. Not can't ever, no. <laughs> Michelle, this has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Oh. Um, like we said, this is actually our first time that we've ever spoken in person. Um, but thank you so much for sharing about your business. It has been incredible. I love what you do. I respect what you do. Um, and I look forward to getting to know more about you even more. Well, thank you so much, Ali. I really loved being here. And um, yeah, I'm a bit like you. Um, I could um, talk on and on and on, but um, time to go for now. <laughs> it's so we say, we say au revoir. Au revoir. We, we will speak again, yeah? <laughs> It's good to have passion in your business. So thank you for watching, everybody. And again, if you'd like to get in touch with Michelle, uh, if you'd like to go to one of those events that she's got coming up, check the comments. Um, we've put the links in there. So, you know, I would highly recommend that you book in or go. All right. Thanks again, Michelle. Thank you. We will see you again soon, everybody. Bye. Bye.